All right, hey, what's up, folks? Earthmaster here, checking in on this uh, March 20th, 2020. Right, a lot of 20s in there. It is about 10 o'clock p.m. West Coast time here in California, and I'm gonna do a quick video update just in regards to worldwide activity, and also cover a little bit of activity that took place earlier in the state of Nevada near Carson City, uh, which is just south of Reno there in Nevada, where a 4.5 earthquake struck there. Uh, very close to the uh, uh, Nevada prison system out there. I believe it's called in the uh, Northern Nevada Correctional Facility. Quite a few folks feeling that earthquake that took place out there all the way down, in fact, in the California there in the Sacramento Valley of Sacramento. Some, quite a few folks feeling that down there in the valley in Sacramento, California. So uh, originally it was a 4.5 magnitude that struck there just outside of Carson City. Um, yeah, originally a 5.0. They downgraded it to a 4.5 um, a short time later. Since then, we're looking at the one day all magnitude map here from the USGS. 4.5 is gonna be that little blue circle right there. You can see the uh, shake map indicating quite a few folks uh, filling it in the light to moderate category but uh, very minimal damage. I seen a couple photos that the, uh, a viewer out there sent to me that showed some uh, items knocked off a shelf there in the store. Um, not for sure exactly how much damage is out there, but uh, uh, 4.5 is not going to do too much considering it was at about 8.4 kilometers below the surface. But still, definitely the... Uh, a little shaker out there right kind of took people by surprise um so yeah since then we've got what do we got one two three about eight earthquakes or so aftershocks that is following that 4.5 and they range anywhere from it looks like about 19 kilometers and i'm guessing that's going to be the 19 kilometer one yes 19 kilometers near hot springs mountain um, all the way, uh, what do we got here? Looks like about, uh, oh, six kilometers or so um, below the surface with a couple other aftershocks there. Gonna have to look into that Hot Springs Mountain one. I didn't see that earlier. Uh, but most of the cluster of aftershocks are very close to that 4.5 that struck. And uh, quite a few of them are on Prison Mountain. There's actually, a, like I mentioned, a prison out there. We'll switch over here to the satellite view and uh, be able to see exactly where that prison is. Very, very close. I'm, I'm talking within about a thousand feet or so, maybe 1,500 feet of uh, the Northern Nevada Correctional Facility there. You can see the, um, the modules or whatever they're called there, housing the prisoners. I'm sure they had quite the, uh, the jolt there. Looks like there might be a little earthquake or aftershock that struck right there in the backyard there. And uh, we had some more aftershocks taking place up on Prison uh, prison Mountain up here. Let's see a couple of those orange circles there sporadically spread out. Not super far in distance, but uh, yeah, I'd say they're pretty much localized there within that area except for this oddball one which took place, uh, when did this one take place here? That one actually took place directly after the 5 point, or the uh, 4.5 there. Um, and that's kind of interesting there to see the, the uh, very deep depth compared to the original quake there. Some type, of, uh, some type of mountain range out here is where that one took place. Um, and according to at least according to the USGS, I don't see any U.S. faults out here. I'm sh not not saying there isn't, but I just don't see any showing up here, at least with the USGS system. Uh, looks like the closest area is going to be... Uh, let's switch back over here to this view so I can see a little bit more detail. Uh, there's just not a whole lot within this area. I guess we got the East Carson 
I wonder why that thing disappears when I click on it a little bit closer. That's kind of strange. The East Carson Valley Fault Zone. At least that's where the deep earthquake took place there, that uh, 2.0. Up here to the north where the 4.5 struck there. I'm not seeing anything, uh, any type of fault structure there. But I kind of want to see uh, real quick what that fault system right there is capable of. I know Nevada has had some some large quakes there. But uh, I'll have to check back on that here in a little bit. Um... I did mention about Prison Mountain. I think that's what it's called there. Let me show you guys a little view here real quick of the um, area. That's kind of a view of the... Uh, uh, looking down into the valley there. I think you can see the prison way off there in the center screen. That's kind of a view from the Prison Mountain area uh, that I found out there on the internet. A lot of, uh, like I say, a lot of mountain ranges out there, and it's definitely a, it's a definitely pretty active area. Um, here's a little bit of information on some earthquake activity that took place back in 2008. Let's see, I started YouTube back in 2006. Really wasn't into the earthquake activity back then. It wasn't until about 2009 when I started getting into the, uh, the uh, earthquake activity. But uh, I guess they had a series of earthquakes there in 2008 near Reno. Uh, looks like the earthquake swarm began in February 2008. But the first significant quake of the series occurred on April 15, 2008, registering a 3.6. Uh, there was a 4.1, 4.2, and the largest of the uh, series there registered a 4.7 and caused uh, some damage in the immediate area around the epicenter there near Reno. So, uh, yeah, 4.5, I guess that kind of matches up there with a uh, close to a 4.7 right, uh, right there. But uh, it's not the largest quake that Nevada has seen. Um, let's see here, what do we got? I guess there was quite a bit of swarming following that 2008 uh, sequence of earthquakes up there. Small to moderate sized quakes there, like I mentioned. Um, the last strong earthquake, uh, M6.1, in the Reno area occurred on April 24th, 1914. So we're looking at over 100 years uh, in between the... Uh, uh, 6.1 and the 4.5 that struck so Reno can see some pretty good sized quakes there how'd you like to be up in the building there in a motel on the top level when the 6.1 hits I would not want to trust me it would definitely be shaking back and forth that's not a good feeling uh, and the state Nevada state's most powerful quake to date was a 7.4 earthquake that struck in 1915 Pleasant Valley earthquake south of Winnemucca. So Nevada, you know, a lot of desert, a lot of mountains. Uh, what creates those mountains out there? Yeah, pretty much uh, false pressure, all that good stuff. Volcanic activity. And uh, you need pressure and whatnot. A lot of movement, a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff to create those mountains there. So 7.4 was the last major powerful earthquake out there in Nevada. So... Uh, it's just good to be prepared out there, folks. Always good to be prepared. Um, let's see here. Hold on a second. I do want to check out the... Uh, let's see. Like I said, this earthquake was strangely felt all the way down to the Sacramento, California area. Pretty crazy. Um, and I'm somewhat kind of close down here to Sacramento, Sacramento. Um, like I say, the further you get away from that epicenter area there in Carson City, of course, the, uh, the intensity of it is going to disappear. Light to moderate shaking right around the epicenter of Carson City was reported by quite a few folks there. I guess even some folks down in Stockton, which is 
south of Sacramento and ways there in the valley felt it as well. Lake Tahoe, Reno, surrounding areas definitely felt it. So, uh, it's, uh, you know, and this act, this I almost exited the stream right now. Uh, this activity comes after that Utah activity, Salt Lake City, right? Pretty interesting activity down there as well. Um, I do want to bring up, or over there, I should say. Uh, I do want to bring up some activity occurring down in Southern California there. And all of this activity took place um, just after the Reno or Carson City earthquakes there. Let's see if I can bring this up here. Okay, so this here is a one day magnitude 2.5 and above. Let's go ahead and go with all magnitudes here. Um, kind of see a little bit of increase there in the Ridgecrest area. I noticed that shortly thereafter um, the quakes there in. i bring that to view so you guys can see. Um, I noticed this activity shortly thereafter the Carson City activity there we go a little bit better bear with me home isolation right it does wonders on the brain and your your clarity of thinking anyway um, Ridgecrest right I seen those earthquakes back in July of last year Still aftershock activity, but a little bit on the uptick following that activity there in the Carson City region. That, something that kind of worries me, and that I mentioned earlier, is this area down here near the Salton Sea. This is the southern section of the San Andreas Fault section there, kind of where it ends. Right? Let me zoom in just a little bit there, Salton Sea region. In the past, we have seen quite the intense earthquake swarm. I believe it was about... Uh, Oh, it's got to be about five, six years now since we've seen a swarm of activity down there. And it basically triggered the uh, geologist to put out a, kind of like a warning that, uh, you know, that we could be experiencing a larger earthquake down there. Um, and they mentioned that on the media and social media uh, just because of the pressure that was being applied out there on the southern part of the uh, San Andreas Fault section, which is right up here. That's the area that the folks, the big folks, right, the professional folks claim that uh, is built up and sprung like a, a spring that, man, you know, something that could, could create a 7.9 to 8.0 earthquake down there if this thing were to unzip. Uh, there's been a lot of pressure built up over the years down here. It's been quite a long time. Yeah, Ridgecrest seen an earthquake. Yeah, that's Southern California. We get it. But right specifically right there on the San Andreas Fault, no. We have not seen any major quakes out there on that section in quite a long time. So a tre tremendous amount of pressure has been uh, building up out there over the years. But this activity right here, down here in the Salton Sea region, not a big activity. Uh, it looks like a couple 2.1s here were about the largest. But this is how it starts here. We start seeing the swarming of activity down there. Now, whether it's, you know, weather related or water movement, I'm not for sure. But it's something I do I want to keep an eye on. Uh, as I mentioned, it's right there, right there at the southern section. The southern section of the Sandra's Fault section extends. Ah, should have got some water. It extends down here to the Brawley section, right? It's kind of, to me, it's kind of like the one, the one in the same even though it's different right here on this map they name it a little bit different separate right i believe it's all connected there and there's been a couple articles about it how it is connected major plate boundary right the pacific plate and the uh north american plate they're not fused together these these areas slide past one another so it's uh they can draw lines on their map all they want out here they're all connected 
and of course the imperial fault system uh, extends down here further south into mexico baja mexico region but uh it's an area to watch folks because this activity kind of popped up right after the earthquake there in carson city and we also seen a little bit more activity over here to the west as well in this specific fault uh the eleanor's eleanor's fault system there no big earthquakes but uh 2.2 i guess not, not a big one but nonetheless this new activity occurred following as i mentioned the activity up north in nevada here so something to keep an eye on latest earthquake looks like uh, let's see a zoom in here a little bit here to these couple red red areas here red circles looks like running springs out there in the san, Bern san bernardino mountains microquakes but those are the latest uh, earthquakes out there taking place in the southern california region i just looking at all this activity and the activity up north in nevada and the activity prior to the uh prior to the activity in nevada today the utah earthquake activity right i believe uh we're seeing a pretty good increase in pressure out here along the west coast something to pay attention to here folks uh, we can swing into Salt Lake City real quick. Take a look at what their aftershock activity uh, looks like. Once again, one day, all magnitudes here. Looks as though it's calmed down a little bit. I can't say so over the past uh, few days after that earthquake struck, but it looks as though like it's calming down just a little bit. Uh, which is good news for those folks up there in Salt Lake City. So, anyway, folks, um, worldwide activity. We can take this out on the scale a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned last night, or it was last night, night, night before, I believe. We're looking at Puerto Rico on the swarming side, and they are continuing with that, with the latest earthquake, a 3.0 there in Puerto Rico. It's kind of an uptick in activity, as I mentioned last night, about uh, you know their little period of quietness has kind of come to an end right now. Kind of seeing quite a three, quite a few threes in there, upper threes as well, striking the Puerto Rico region. So definitely have to watch that region there and uh, just a cluster man look at this take a look at this side of the world folks i mean most of this activity should be dropping off pretty soon the earthquakes in china mongolia and over there by kajakistan there all of these should be dropping off really soon uh past that 24 hour period but there has definitely been a lot of earthquake activity in that part of the world including a pretty good sized magnitude over here around the uh, mediterranean sea region 5.7 struck there let me get the exact coordinates where that thing uh happened near greece all right near pyramithia greece 10 kilometers quite a few folks filling it historical activity shows that uh it's a hot spot of activity no stranger to earthquakes out there in the uh, Mediterranean Sea region. So anyway, folks, um, I do got a barbecue going on. Got some New York State cooking, right? Can't stop living just because there's a major virus going on. But uh, you got to enjoy life while you can't. Who knows how much longer we have. So please take care out there, folks. Uh, I do wish everyone well. And I uh, hope everyone's healthy out there. You know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world the thing is to not panic not freak out just to accept what's coming um, if you can't change it then no need to worry about it right just got to live life uh, the best you can so those are my words of wisdom for tonight that's what i'm trying to do <laughs> so i figured i would pass that info along folks have a good night everyone stay safe out there and uh we'll chat you guys a little bit later Peace.